Now to the Conservative Party leadership here in Canada. The deadline to sign up members passed Friday, and if the numbers are correct, it could be a doozy. Sources tell CBC News that over 600,000 people could cast a vote this time around. That includes new members, membership renewals, and existing members. The campaigns are already fighting, though, about when to circulate the list of those members. We invited representatives of Pierre Polyev, Patrick Brown, and Jean Charest's campaign teams to the show this evening. Only Jenny Byrne from the Pierre Polyev campaign was available. The Brown campaign sent us a statement saying they want the full membership list released and accused Polyev's team of blocking it. Polyev's team says it doesn't oppose the release of the full list, just the release of income complete data. Let's talk about the bigger picture here with Michelle Cadario. She was a national campaign director and deputy chief of staff to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Brian Topp was an NDP leadership candidate and president of the party. And Dimitri Soudis was a communications director to Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Hello, all three of you. Good to see you on this uh, Monday evening. Let's talk about that top line, the 600,000 potential members who can cast a vote. Dimitri, I'll start with you. That sets a record for, for the party, a big record. What are your what was your immediate takeaway when you heard that top line? I think we had been saying well, maybe 500,000 before. Well, we started off saying maybe 300,000, then the 300,000 turned into a 400,000, then into a 500,000, and here we are. Um, there will be more than 600,000 Canadians eligible to vote. This is the largest number of member memberships that any one federal party has ever had uh, at a given point in time. Um, I, I, I think that uh, it's going to be the biggest challenge for all campaigns, especially the front runners. Mr. Poiliev is going to be to making sure that these members go out and vote. Um, and to go back to your introduction, Vashi, um, the reason that the Patrick Brown campaign wants a temporary or, or a non-final list released is because they want access to the 300,000 plus members that Pierre Polyev has signed up so they can go into persuasion mode. I was talking to a key organizer for Mr. Charest this weekend and he told me, next step, persuasion. What does that mean when a political campaign or a leadership campaign wants to persuade? It means that they don't have enough members that they have sold in order to win this race or to be the front runner. So it's going to be the longest three months for Mr. Polyev because he has to get these members to go out and vote. And as I said several months ago, um, you know, Mr. Polyev, why is Mr. Polyev the front runner today? He is the first conservative politician that has been able to politically weaponize social media. So this turnout of more than 300,000 members that he has sold is truly unprecedented. I did not see such momentum back in 2004 when I was with Stephen Harper's leadership campaign to become the leader of the new Conservative Party. And, and that is what the campaign is saying, that they've sold uh, 312,000 of those you know, 600 plus thousand memberships. All of this subject to uh, you know, scrutiny and fact checking, certainly when, when things become more public, but that's what the, the individual campaigns are saying. Brian, I saw you not nodding when the word persuasion was used there. For a lot of people who have, and most people who are watching tonight, who have not worked on the inside of a leadership campaign, Explain from your perspective the significance of that list of memberships and how just because they were sold, for example, by one campaign doesn't mean it's a it's a locked in vote or or does it? What do you think? Well, I think in a leadership race, um, <clears throat> after everybody's joined, uh, then you want to get going at them as quickly as you can and you want to try to persuade them to switch. But I, I, I want to make another point about this, if I could. And that's this. Um, Mr. Polyver has recruited 300,000 members by playing with fire. And what he is doing is he is out there recruiting on a pretty hard and pretty clear appeal to people who believe that climate change isn't real, who believe that public health measures are a hoax, who believe that uh, parliamentarians should, uh, should mess around with monetary policy at the snap of their fingers. He's, he is appealing to the People's Party, he is appealing to anti-vaxxers, and he is setting up the Conservative Party for a rerun of what we just saw in Alberta, which is that a, a leadership candidate uh, seeks to win by recruiting people who are not going to follow him into the necessary turn to, uh, to, the, to a more moderate line after the leadership is over. And so when these people join the party, recruited that way, they are going to stay. And they're not going to follow uh, a leader to a more moderate path. And so the Conservative Party finds itself with, with hundreds of thousands of members 
committed to um, to positions that are well outside of the Canadian mainstream. I think that's a long-term problem for the Tories. And I want to get both Dimitri and Michelle first to weigh in on that, because uh, I guess my question is, as I, as I listen to Brian say that, I'm not sure, and I'd love to get your take, Michelle, if there is this pivot to the more, quote unquote, moderate uh, views that we have seen past, for example, like conservative leaders like Andrew Scheer and especially Aaron O'Toole attempt to make in the general election. Pierre Polyev, his whole message has been basically to members, I won't do that. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, there's there's been absolutely no hint of uh, whatsoever that uh, he sees the middle ground as where he wants to actually um, campaign from should he should he win the leadership. And, uh, you know, I think a, a little bit of it will remain to be seen. I think the other point on all these members is, you know, yes, we've, you know, there's been the fights about the quantity. And, you know, I think that the specificity that the Polyev campaign is using, um, you know, certainly shows credibility to those numbers. Right. But I think the real question is the quality of the of the memberships as well. Right. Are these people really committed to to voting? And that's, I think, the number that actually matters even more. Like how many people are actually going to be engaged now going forward in this process? How many are going to cast that ballot? Um, and how many are going to be actually taking those calls from all those uh, leadership candidates um, to even be open to persuasion? Uh, and, and I think that that's the most fascinating and interesting part of what, to, what we have going forward. Um, you know, I don't know that there is a path that um, Mr. Polyev has left open for himself to, to pave it to be the middle ground. Um, and I'm not sure he wants to. Uh, like, there's been no evidence whatsoever that, that, that he sees that as necessary. And, uh, you know, um, right. as, a, as a liberal, that's, uh, that's unnerving um, that, uh, that he's clearly looking at something in the, in the, the political numbers that says that that, is, that, that that could potentially be a successful path. I sincerely hope not. I, I just have a few minutes left. I want to get one more comment from each of you. And uh, Dimitri, I want to get your thoughts on that. I sort of, I, I have the same sense as Michelle, like it doesn't, you know, part of Mr. Polyev's message has been, I won't be, and he doesn't explicitly name them, but I won't sort of be like leaders past and, and pivot and sort of, you know, as he would term it, I think like apologize for being a conservative. It, there's no indication that he's going to make a move away from the the policy and the kind of things. And, and I understand the description that, that Brian puts forward about it being, you know, uh, some of them are, are, you know, very controversial positions, but he doesn't seem to, to want to pivot from them. I, 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 think, I think you're right on that. Uh, but let's not forget, um, we are not the audience. Uh, the audience is yeah. the Canadian elect electorate. Um, and, you know, due respect to Brian, I wouldn't put 6,000 members of the Conservative Party into a basket of deplorables. Uh, you know, Justin Trudeau was able to move from third place to first place in the 2015 election because he tapped into the mood of the electorate. Um, and we should not underestimate, after two years of a pandemic, we should not underestimate the mood of the general electorate. Um, you know, on the issue of this leadership race, uh, Mr. Polyev may have tapped into something that we are not necessarily able to recognize or to see. The traditional way of doing politics uh, in 2022 compared to 2004 or even a few leadership races ago has changed drastically. And the final point I'll make is Mr. Polyev, and, and I don't disagree, you know, for example, Mr. Polyev cannot fire the governor of the Bank of Canada. Only the board of directors of the Bank of Canada uh, can dismiss the governor. Um, you know, his minister is not being allowed to go to Davos, the World Economic Forum or um, the position he's taken on cryptocurrency, which is basically telling the Bank of Canada not to create a new currency, a, a digital currency. These things will not be the ballot question three years from now during the election campaign. But I would also say that Mr. Polyev uh, is probably the first leadership candidate that will not be beholden after the election campaign because he has managed to get so many members coming into the party. The challenge, as you said, getting these people to vote uh, and making sure that they hold on to these members until the very last moment. Now, in terms of fraud, and I don't want to conclude on that, in terms of, you know, memberships sold to people who don't even know that they've bought a membership form, the Conservative Party has a two-step validation process whereby people need to put their ID with their picture, with their address. So people, in order to vote, need to actually photocopy, for example, their driver's license. Or if they don't have a driver's license, right. photocopy their Medicare card and a utility bill. Okay, Brian, I want you to get to, to weigh in as well, just on the, um, the, the conversion from 
this point of memberships to actually casting the ballot? What would you be watching for in the next few months? Well, I, I, I think it's true that the, first of all, that the Conservative Party uh, probably is going to validate these folks. And by the way, I think they're going to vote. Um, I think there really are. I think these re are real memberships and I think they're going to vote. And I guess my, my point about them is whether or not Mr. Pelia wants to uh, appeal to the broad electorate and the views these people represent are not where most Canadians are coming from. He may not be able to. Uh, we may have, see a fundamental change in the Conservative Party here in which unlike Mr. Harper, who was careful in uh, framing his appeal to the mainstream, uh, this next Tory leadership, whether it's Mr. Polyev or not, may not be able to, because these members, once they have joined that party, they're not going anywhere. They do vote, they do stay, and they are well outside of the Canadian mainstream. Okay, Michelle, I'll give you the last word. Sure. Well, I think that it's now all about, you know, Mr. Polyev, he's a front runner, clearly in the lead. He can't make a mistake. That's what I'm going to be watching for. And the others, they have to make their mark. Someone, if they want to be a serious challenger, has to break through on an issue or take advantage of, of some kind of a situation and actually kind of put themselves forward and actually be a real challenger. Uh, otherwise, I think that the, uh, the race is kind of done. All right. Well, it stays interesting for us. Thanks, all three of you, for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Michelle Cuderio, Brian Top, and Dimitri Soudis. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.